a tough business to be a farmer. And so how do we get the right technology at the right cost structure so that it's both good for the grower as well as good for humanity and the planet? And solutions like ours are there. Welcome to The Switch. I'm Elena Casas. Chemical fertilizer has been crucial in growing enough food to keep all 8 billion people on the planet fed. But the manufacture, transport and use of fertilizer is responsible for planet warming emissions, equivalent to about a billion tons of carbon dioxide every year. The farming industry needs an alternative, and one is to treat seeds with genetically modified bacteria. Pivot Bio launched that technology just five years ago, and CEO Chris Abbott joins me now. Chris, hi. To start with then, why is it necessary to replace chemical fertilizer? Synthetic fertilizer plays a key role in, in feeding a growing global population. Uh, now, on the other hand, it has grown to account for about two and a half percent of greenhouse gas emissions and synthetic fertilizer, uh, actually about somewhere between a third and a half of that is wasted. And that typically happens through weather, volatile weather, whether that's extreme heat, extreme rain, those events move nitrogen through the soil. That wasted fertilizer pollutes air and waterways, while some is released as nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas with nearly 300 times the warming impact of CO2. Pivot Bio is gene editing microbes that naturally capture nitrogen to make them far more efficient. And what we do is we use microbes. So invisible bacteria, you can think of as many fertilizer plants. Uh, fertilizer facilities sitting on the root of the corn plant. Uh, and what happens is that microbe is converting nitrogen from the air. And nitrogen fixation is the process by which we create synthetic fertilizer. We now do it at one trillionth the size of that microbe embedded on the root system of that plant. Corn uses more fertilizer than any other crop in the US, and 5% of American corn has already been treated with Pivot Bio's product, although it won't entirely remove the need to use fertilizer. And our longer term, term ambition is to take that current 25% of a plant's need, roughly 25% is where we're at today, uh, upwards of 50% in under a decade. And so we think we can make a big dent in this market in the sense that we can continue to provide in-season premium source of nitrogen at or below the cost of synthetic. Today, we're below the cost of synthetic nitrogen. And so as we increase that rate of fixation, doing that at a lower cost is good for our growers. Is there a risk, though, of these gene-edited microbes escaping into the wider ecosystem of contamination? No, there isn't. And in fact, we start with a microbe that's naturally occurring. So we apply our gene editing tools to microbes that naturally live on the root system of corn plants and have that gene that can fix nitrogen, right? That process that I mentioned converting nitrogen in the air to ammonia. We then make it happen more consistently and at a higher rate. And what happens is we basically tune them to run a marathon at a sprinter's pace. Just like I couldn't do that, uh, our microbes end up dying off before that plant even reaches its mature states. Pivot Bio says the gene-edited microbes die and break down naturally in the soil. While that was enough to persuade regulators in Washington, the company can't sell its products in Europe, where gene-edited crops are banned. We do not introduce new DNA to the microbe. And so our products are all approved as gene-edited novel crop nutrition products. In Europe, they don't allow gene edited yet. Farmers, Chris, in many countries are often key lobbyists against net zero policies because they feel that they're being targeted by government's carbon cutting attempts. Do you think that technology like yours can help get farmers on board? We do, and, and I've, I've worked very closely with some of those groups and, and I'm empathetic to the position that they're in. It's not the grower's job to save the world while other folks pollute it. We have to work together with these solutions. The growers are part of the solution that we need to get after here as a group. It's a tough business to be a farmer. And so how do we get the right technology at the right cost structure so that it's both good for the grower as well as good for humanity and the planet? And solutions like ours are there. We are there. This is cheaper than synthetic fertilizer and it's good for a grower. So we need more solutions like ours coming together to help those growers.